Next presentation would be on endoscopic double bypass by uh, Srujan from Jam Hospital. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, today's uh, the case is uh, double stenting. I am Dr. Srujan from Jam Hospital, first year uh, DNRB PG. Coming to the case capsule, patient is a 72-year-old female who is a known case of papillary adenocarcinoma with liver meds, status post laparoscopy and frozen section of liver lesions, and uh, ERCP and palliative SEMS was done in April 2023. Uh, now, the patient present with chief complaints of vomiting for 10 days, uh, multiple episodes, black colored, with uh, LOS discoloration of uh, eyes and urine for past one week, with complaints of abdominal pain for one week, right hypochondrial and epigastric region, intermittent and non-radiating, and uh, history of complaints of uh, decreased intake and loss of appetite and weight was there, complaints of generalized weakness and constipation. There is no history of fever, giddiness, chest pain, palpitations and breathlessness. A patient is a known hypertensive and currently not on any treatment. Past surgical history is uh, lysias, cataract and uh, uh, laparoscopic frozen section of liver. On examination, patient have paler, ictus and pedal edema. Patient is tachypnic with uh, pulse rate of 106 and uh, BP uh, hypotension with BP of 80-60. Uh, respiratory rate uh, is 24 and saturation is 98 at room air. Uh, systemic examination, parabdomen is soft. Uh, tenderness is there in uh, right atrochondrium. There is no organomegaly, no guarding and rigidity, no shifting dullness and fluid thrill. Bowel sounds are present. Uh, other systemic examination was normal. Coming to the investigations, uh, patient had severe anemia with HB of 5.5, total uh, leukocytosis with uh, total count of uh, 17,040, and uh, bilirubin was elevated with a uh, direct component of 4.1. Hypoalbumia is there. Uh, AST and LT are mildly elevated with uh, ALP elevated <coughs> 446. Uh, patient also have uh, AKA and uh, Procal, uh, which indicates sepsis. Uh, we have done um, plain CT abdomen. Since uh, patient is having AKA, we couldn't do a C CT abdomen, uh, where um, um, SEMS was in situ with uh, stent in growth, causing dilatation of proximal CBD and bilateral IHBRD. Um, and uh, there is distended gallbladder with uh, sludge and impacted uh, cystic duct calculus. And there is soft tissue uh, thickening in D2, D3, uh, keeping with uh, periampillary growth. The exact size couldn't be measured uh, as the patient uh, CECT was not done. And uh, there are few hypodense lesions in the liver indicating secondaries. And uh, there are also secondaries in the lungs which were not present previously. Here uh, we can uh, see the place stumped with uh, stunt in growth. And uh, the second image, um, the first arrow is the pylorus part, and the second arrow is the um, gallbladder. Uh, we'll get to know why uh, we have uh, chosen this image. And we have done an upper endoscopy, which showed uh, stasis with gastric secretions and food, uh, with an infiltrative growth in D1, D2 junction, with luminal narrowing. Scope was, uh, couldn't be passed beyond, and uh, ampulla was not visualized. Uh, we have diagnosed the patient with uh, advanced periampillary carcinoma with liver and lung meds with uh, malignant uh, GGO and obstructive jaundice with uh, cholangitis with septic shock and impacted calculus in cystic duct and AKA. So what are our options? So uh, for palliation of obstructive jaundice, we thought of uh, US-guided heptogastrostomy or cholecystogastrostomy. We have uh, chosen cholecystogastrostomy as it has lesser side effects. We also had an option of cholecystodiorinogastrostomy, uh, <coughs> but uh, since the, there was already a sense placed uh, in the CBD, uh, that option was ruled out. For palliation, either there is duodenal stunting or US-guided GJ. Uh, but uh, because of the cost issues, uh, we went with uh, duodenal stunting. PTBD was other option, but uh, since we are a gastroenterologist, it is ruled out. And uh, surgery was other option. Here, uh, we can see as soon as we enter liver, there is...
here uh, as soon as we done endoscopy you can see lot of uh, thick secretions with uh, food stasis and uh, as we enter d1 d2 junction there is an infiltrative growth uh, where we have tried to pass uh, negotiate beyond with pediatric scope we couldn't enter as uh, we have planned for uh, dinoscope we have placed a guide wire across the stent <coughs> across the growth and uh, we have placed uh, an tome and uh, in injected uh, contrast uh, so that we could do it under fluoroscope guidance and uh, we here we have placing an 12 m <coughs> 12 cm uh, sense across the growth we can see uh, it is nicely deployed and uh, with the help of uh, fluoroscopic guidance we can see the stunt deploying in the d2 with the uh, obstruction then we went ahead with the uh, cholecystogastrostomy here uh, b uh, this is the why the reason we have uh, shown the image here uh, pylorus is uh, adjacent to the um, gallbladder here uh, we have used an um, uh, a plane and uh, introduced an lamps uh, into the gallbladder and uh, using a freehand technique uh, we have withdrawn the proximal part and uh, using the freehand technique we also uh, release the distal end of the uh, lamps into the stomach. Um, here uh, you can see it is uh, released in the pylorus region and uh, the bile is coming out of the uh, stomach. We can also see a lot of sludge coming out. Since the patient having uh, gallbladder stones with um, cystic duct uh, occlusion, we, uh, we want to uh, enter with the periodic scope and try to uh, bring the stones out or pull it into the CBD. So we are doing a CRE balloon dilatation across the lamps, which is uh, 20 mm. We have uh, used a bigger size lamps so that we can intervene. Here we can see a lot of uh, stones coming and also a sludge material coming across the lamps. Then uh, we have taken a pediatric scope, uh, entered into the gallbladder and uh, we can see the gallbladder is free of stones and even cystic duct doesn't have any stones. There is a minor trauma happened uh, during lamps insertion. Here uh, we can see the lamps placed across the gallbladder and this thing previously placed stems and uh, D2 stunting. Coming to the follow up of the patient, uh, patient was started on oral diet on POD1. LFT was in decreasing trend, sepsis resolved and patient got discharged on day 3. On follow up, patient was doing well, tolerating oral feeds, LFT normalized to 1.1. Uh, coming to the endoscopic ultrasound guidance, uh, gallbladder drainage and management of biliary obstruction. It was first described in 2007 Dr. and it was done using Dr. pigtail. Dr. will skip the review of literature, okay. just uh, in view of time. That was, that was nice presentation. Uh, I think uh, we know there's a master of bypass, so it, uh, given the Suez Canal situation, maybe we know would have drilled through Egypt and got uh, <laughs> got a new new uh, new canal itself. Uh, so the, the, it's open for discussion. Uh, one one question: What is a freehand technique, Doctor? You you were telling two three times you were telling freehand technique. What is it? Is there anything? Is there anything that you can enlighten them? So the freehand technique is like uh, while doing a uh, hot exos GJ, usually in Western countries they use a double balloon technique where they pass a balloon through the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, into the jejunum, they inflate both the balloons and they instill water and they create an artificial pseudo cyst. That's with balloon assisted lamps. In freehand technique, we don't use a balloon to occlude anything. We directly puncture with the hot exos. The rate of slipping with freehand technique is more. That's freehand technique. Yes, so what was in your mind, what was the, suppose you just did ultrasound guided percutaneous cystostomy oh, and just uh, drained it. That's what we do when the person is very sick in sepsis and in septic shock. Yes, I would not push in for a procedure like this, in the, the patient is in septic shock. 
So how se- how serious was the patient patient general condition? Patient is in septic shock. Septic shock. So what should be the ideal procedure? Septic shock. Just put on a needle and do ultra ultrasound guided cystostomy, and then you just drain it. That's now one of the recommended procedures in empyema of the Ma'am, gallbladder. Uh, previously, and uh, then tackle the obstruction of the uh, the vomiting bit a little later. Okay. In an acute situation, I just want to know what was the so far score. No, how serious was the patient? A patient, how sick was the patient that you had to move in for an ERCP procedure or an endo ultrasound guided procedure? Ma'am, uh, other than hi- hypotension, uh, the patient was clinically stable, ma'am. And uh, there was AKA uh, leukocytosis. No, no, we're not worried about AKA and all. I just want to know what was the state of shock. Septicemic shock, a patient was otherwise okay with an antibiotic, and uh, the choice, you know, one is the cost, other one is the choice of procedure. Patient? You cannot say that. Uh, I am a gastroenterologist and therefore I would do that. That's a wrong statement. Uh, ma'am, so uh, I think you can just clarify on that. In the best of centers, in one of the best centers, you can just push in a needle, do an ultrasound guided, settle, allow the patient to settle down and then tackle out the gastric ordered obstruction. Ma'am, uh, one thing is there is obstructive cystic duct uh, calculi, ma'am. That's okay. Uh, uh, th- that is causing you more You don't pain. have to venture in and open a balloon and take out the stones. You do a cystostomy, the stones, even in the peritoneal cavity, nothing happens. You just drain it out the outside. Endo- ultrasound guided cystostomy, uh, um, called cystostomy is one of the advocated procedures in patients who are in septic shock. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, uh, there is actually a review of literature. The exam, ma'am. please don't say this, okay? Yes. Uh, uh, actually, I'm a uh, gastroenterologist and then uh, you'll, you'll land up in huge problem. Uh, review of literature is there, ma'am. Where no, the I'm not interested in that. In a given patient, we want to know what's the management. That's okay. it. What is ideal? Cystic duct compression is relevant and only when there is high pressure system. As long as you remove the pressure from the gallbladder by some means, cystic duct obstruction loses its relevance. So, so it's a neatly done job, but what Madam says is there are safer alternatives considering the complete patient. What's involved? What's involved? What's involved? What's involved? What's involved? What's involved? What was the net cost involved? We need to make a living. You have to, I mean, one is, one is the, one is the I, best, I'm not talking even about the cost. What is ideal for the patient? What's the best? I'm just thinking about the patient. I'm not even worried about the cost. I would give the best option for the patient. Patient was initially present with hypotension. That we, st- we have stabilized for one day. The person is hypotension. You have ultrasound no. guided. No, no, no. We have, we have stabilized the patient. Next day only you have taken the patient for this procedure. That's what I'm asking. Between yeah. two, you yeah. have ultrasound and you have this modality of stent, yeah. let us let, let the audience, all of us know what should be the ideal management of this patient, that's all. One, one is technology and we know, we know advances are taking place in leaps and bounds. But I just want to know in a given situation, what should be the best option? Should I refer the patient to one of the centers which does the stenting? Or if I have an, an, a, a good radiologist who can help me with just tidying over that crisis and then do a gastro with the endoscopic approach? Thank you, Dr. Srojan. Excellent presentation.